Hi guys, so I'm going to read Fantastic Four number 33. So I'm, I'm going to try to upload as much as I can today. Because I know recently I've been slacking off on the uh, videos, so I'm sorry about that. But see the fabulous FF for the first time, all fighting on the side of the Submariner. The fabulous Fantastic Four find themselves fighting side by side with Submariner. Script, Smile and Stan Lee. Art, Jolly Jack Kirby. Inks, Chucklin' Chick Stone. Lettering, Amiable Art Simic. Scene, FF Headquarters. Time, now. Action, about to begin. So let's go. Holy cow, what's that? Last year's winner of the y Miss Yancey Street Beauty Contest? It's a strange form of sea life, which was discovered yesterday, Ben. The Coast Guard sent it to read for study. It's obviously a creature from the deepest part of the ocean. Something very unusual must have happened down there to drive it to the surface. I like to see the bait that they used to hook uh, that baby. Oh, okay. Maybe there's a picture of the blame thing in this encyclopedia. I'll look for under N for nutty monsters. Forget it, Ben. You won't find that specimen listed in any reference work. Even the subionic analysis structure, scope, cannot furnish a clue to its origin. It comes from the deepest part of the ocean, Reed. Isn't that the area where the submariner drip dwells? Hey, that's right. Do you think old Flathead has had anything to do with that overgrown goldfish? Why don't you just fly over the goat coastline, Johnny, and see if you can spot anything unusual there? Will do, Reed. And see if you can do it for once without that nutty flame on yell of yours. Well, I mean, you say it's clobber and Tom also. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's kind of hypocrite. Anyway, it's kind of hypocritical. But good old Ben. He's only happy when he's griping about something. I'm glad it's starting to get dark. I've been waiting to try a new little stunt I dreamed up. Well, it works perfectly. By concentrating my flame just right. I can create instant flares. And as luck would have it, the torch sees by the light of his flare. A shrouded figure, climbing out of the water into a pier. A flaming fireballs! He's flying right up in the air! No, he just so soared high enough to land easily on the dock. That outfit he's wearing has some kind of flying gadget attached to it. Now he's taking the cloak off. Wait, it isn't a he. It's a blue-skinned female. That means she's one of the Submariner's race. With the speed of a blazing thunderbolt, the human torch swoops down and... Okay, little lady, you're coming with me. Seconds later... Reed's hunch was right, kiddies. Look what I found climbing out of the sea. I remember her. It's Lady Dorma, the noblewoman who loved Prince Namor. As described in FF Annual Number 1, Stan and Jack. And still I love him. I came to your wretched surface world, where one such as I can cannot even breathe without an artificial device, in order to enlist your aid. You want our help? Yes, and if you refuse me, some mariner will die, and I shall be the one to blame. I don't trust that smooth-talking tomato. It might be a trap. What is it, Dorma? What has happened? A short time ago, Prince Namor found his people again, and returned to us in triumph, acclaimed by one and all. I shall never leave you again, my subjects, for this is where the Submariner belongs. But during the first week of his new reign, disaster struck. Our people's high priest demanded an urgent audience, and then... Sire, remember the ancient legends which tell that one day an enemy will come to ravage fair Atlantis? No such an enemy is even now almost at our gates. He calls himself a Tuma, the one from the murky depths. He's enlisted an army of thousands, and he claims your throat. Oh, okay, so it's the old man saying that. He calls himself a Tuma, the one from the murky depths. He's enlisted an army of thousands, and he claims your throne. His strength is said to be equal to your own sire, and in savagery and barbarism, he far exceeds you, my liege. Death to the Submariner. Only a Tuma will wear the crown of Atlantis. Utuma from the murky depths. 
how I curse the day I first heard that horrible name. A civil war, thousands of fathoms below the surface of the sea. And yet, it's not impossible. But what of Namor? What happened to him? Tell us, Lady, Na Lady Dorma. The words do not come easily to my lips, surface girl. For in truth, I, it is I who am to blame. When the battle started, Submariner was like a god, fearless, bold, ever at the forefront, ever in command. Atuma dares not cross this deep divide. We are too strong. It was then that the, my world crashed down about me. My lord, do not expose yourself to their arms this way. If anything should happen to you, my heart would... Hold your tongue, woman. Never speak thus of love to me. You would offer him your love, and you felt he had scorned you. But what then? I was hurt, heartbroken. I wanted to humble him, to bring him to his knees. And so may Neptune forgive me. I betrayed him to a tumor. Using my authority as a noble woman of the realm, I ordered the guard away from a vital outpost, allowing Atuma's hordes to crash through. Remember, you vowed no harm would come to Namor. Bah, witless female, what do vows mean to the mighty Atuma? Within seconds I realized what a dread thing I had done, what a terrible menace I had unleashed upon Atlantis, and upon the world. Death of the Submariner! Hail Atuma! He smashed through my defenses. The advantage is his. But a blood, prince of blood is not so easily defeated. Even though not but death awaits me, I shall die as I've lived. I'll fight till the end. Namor was everywhere, fighting, commanding, inspiring. His power was awesome, his strength unfailing. But though his legions fought valiantly, there was only one Submariner, and Atuma's hordes inch closer and closer. I couldn't bear to see any more. I fled in panic, wanting to help, but not knowing where to turn. And then I thought of you. Namor's our sworn enemy. Why should we want to help him? But it's not just him. If Atuma t triumphs, nothing will stop him. He'll attack your surface world next. Reed, I know how you hate the Submariner, and perhaps you have good reason. And yet, I always felt if things had been different, you and he might have been friends. Save your breath, darling. We will na help Namor. In fact, I have a new preparation which will enable us to fight underwater more effectively than ever before. It just better not taste like cod liver oil, like your last blame serum. This isn't a serum, Ben. It's an oxo spray. It supplies the skin with a layer of self-perpetuating oxygen, enabling one to breathe underwater for hours at a time. That's what you say. It smells like a blame dose of DDT to me. Don't take my word for it. Try it out. Okay, okay. Since there aren't any oceans in this room, I'll use this fishbowl. Hey, how about that? It works. And you better be careful, Johnny. Your flame will be a, a bit harder to control, what with the extra oxygen which has permeated your skin. I see what you mean, Reed. And now let's get to our bathosphere and at the dock as soon as possible. Every second may be vital. And so, imagine us going to rescue Namor. We gotta have our heads examined. Maybe you could be excused from this mission, Ben. But your tongue, kid. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. Finally, I can direct you to the spot. That'll be fine, Lady Dorma. We are not apt to find any road signs down here. Hey, Scrat Stretch, quit stealing my lines. Down, 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 into the strange silent world of the ocean depths go the intrepid Fantastic Four, accompanied by the lovely, strong-willed Lady Dorma. None of them suspecting the shocks and dangers which await them. And there's like a really beautiful like thing I think Jack Kirby drew. And the, But one of Atuma's ever-vigilant patrols sights the silent bathysphere. And the order is given. The order to attack. Boom! This is good as time as any to find out if Stretcho's nutty axle spray really works. Alright, who's the wise guy? Who's the wise guy? Look out, Ben. Someone's hurtling huge boulders at you. Big deal. 
All I gotta do is catch one like this. And now, it's their turn to look out. Bam. Ah, uh, now ain't that a shame. The hill tumbled down on the little catapult. And it probably took them weeks to build it with their little erector set. I know the intruders are not those... I know not who those intruder, intruders are, but they must be stopped in the name of Atuma. Quickly, one burst of your explosive grenade grade, will stop anything that lives. But before the lethal weapon can find its target, a thin burst of flame shatters it into nothingness. This is great. Reed's oxal spray increased my flame so much that I can actually blaze underwater. These bozos won't be able to see if I steam up the water around them. Just in time. I better stick close to the others. My flame only lasts for seconds down here. Nice work, Buttercup. I knew you'd learn something if you hung around me long enough. Say, where did Reed go? Oh, there he is. Get a load of that. How corny can you be? We'll leave the bathosphere where it fell. We'll have a better chance of getting to a tumor without it. Hey. How long would that spray gizmo of yours let us breathe down here? Um, about another half hour, so we have to, got to move fast. Why do do we delay when there is need for haste? He's waving us back. He must see danger ahead. Enemy patrols all around us. We need some form of camouflage. Seconds later, a silent, large silent undersea form glides past the patrol. Attracting no attention with its natural looking appearance. We made it past some Reed. I never thought you could do it. Can't keep it up much longer, Sue. The weight is almost unbearable. We've got to think of something else. Okay, okay. We'll all go on a diet. Whoa, hold everything. I got a better idea. Wait, you are diving towards one of the Tuma's deep sea tanks. You're telling me. And a line, kiddies. Everybody out! Uh, good work, big buddy. They never knew what hit him. Uh, let's face it, Junior. When I go into action, it's like sheer poetry. Now we can sneak by in their own ship. Wow, look at all the in reinforcements heading for Atuma. The Submariner won't have a chance. You kidding? He's got us! That's like buying himself a hunk of instant victory. Meantime... A short distance away, Prince Namor continues to make a last-ditch defense of his beloved undersea empire. A hydro-powered battering ram, breaking through our inner walls. We are outnumbered. We have suffered betrayal. But so long as the Submariner lives, we never shall be outfought. I strike for Atlantis! Crack. Fighting like a creature possessed, smashing, crashing, pounding, hurling his attackers from him like an undersea dreadnought. The super-powered Submariner carries the battle once again to the dazed and battered enemy. Back, you sea vermin. Back to the murky depths of which you came. Back at the command of Namor. My people frightened disobedient children with tales of Namor's terrible strength and awesome wrath. But never did I believe such tales to be true. Never. Until now. Sire, our weapons will soon be empty, while Atuma has arms without limit. Keep firing. And when you shall fire no more, we shall still fight on. With clubs, rocks, bare fists, we'll fight to the death. Meanwhile, what of Atuma himself? Any other foe would have long since surrendered. Namor must be driven to his knees. You shall triumph, mighty Atuma. It is your destiny. No man can fight what he cannot see. Unleash the globals of darkness upon him. Atuma so commands. And so, within seconds, is there no limit to the weapons at Atuma's disposal? What can be the purpose of these strangely ominous floating globes? Within seconds, the fighting monarch of Atlantis gets his answer, as the mysterious globals dissolve into blinding pockets of murky fu fluid. I'm being blinded! Everything is growing dark, hazy. I cannot see. As the globals of darkness spread throughout the area, Namor's loyal little band of warriors trip over each other in blind confusion, unable to recognize friend from foe, unable to fight. Until the darkness clears, we're helpless. 
None but Namor can save us now. And none but Namor can fight back. For only Namor, with his wondrous winged feet, can leap above the gathering darkness. For too long have I been content to fight a defensive battle. Now when things look the most hopeless, I must change my tactics. Now when he least expects it, I shall carry the battle to Atuma. And at that very moment, accompanied by the Lady Dorma, the fabulous Fantastic Four approached the scene, entering a battle not of their making, on a strangely alien battleground, against a foe whose powers they can barely imagine. Judging by the wreckage, we're nearing the main battle site. Before we go any further, let me turn invisible and see what lies ahead. Be careful, Sue. Not only must we fear Atuma, but even Namor might treat us as enemies. Behold, Submariner appears. He is challenging Atuma to hand-to-hand -hand com or duel, just as Atuma guessed he would. Is the trap ready? Of course. Once the battle between them begins, I'll aim these subsonic sound waves at Namor. Their power will drain his strength, making him an easy victim for Atuma. Namor's too honorable, too much of a, the true warrior, to suspect such a cruel trap. I've got to help him. But how? Atlantis shall be mine. It is my destiny. Never. Only Namor is truly Prince of the Blood. If I have only one chance, if I can make my invisible force field surround both of them and their sound wave machine, I'm doing it. I think it's going to work. Not suspecting the encirclement of Sue Storm's invisible force field, the two lieutenants of Atuma activate their strange machine but the sound waves cannot penetrate the powerful, unseen barrier. It happened as I hoped. The sound wave energy hit my force screen and bounced back, blowing up the machine. Seconds later, what of my prince? Does he still live? Yes, Dorma. We're just in time. He's fighting Atuma, hand to hand, but the invaders have set traps for him, which Namor doesn't suspect. Then what's our next move? We've got to fan out. Cover as much territory as possible, without Namor seeing us. We must save him from Atuma's traps. Make sure he can fight a fair fight. For centuries, the legends of Atlantis has predicted the coming of a conqueror. Know you, Namor, that Atuma is that conqueror. The legends are true, but your tongue is false. It is Namor of whom the legends tell. <laughs> bah, you have grown weak and soft. You are not the warrior Atuma is. I'll drive that lie back into your throat, barbarian. Here in the depths, there are none as powerful as Namor. He wears no armor, carries no weapon. Yet, he fights like a thousand furies. But he cannot triumph. My next trap will finish him. And even as that thought crosses Atuma's scheming brain, his second trap is almost made ready. Namor is within our sights. Prepare to fire. Not even his strength can survive our ionic ray. My captain, someone approaches. Truer words were never spoken, sweetie. And now that I'm here, I'll rip your oversized tinker toy apart before someone stubs uh, his little toesy against it. Scrunch. Meanwhile, being a few years older, the other three costume adventurers can function a few minutes longer. And so... Uh, is this in the right order? Okay, again, it's not. Okay, so this is... So, and seeing as you big bad soldier boys are all wet behind the ears, I'll let you cool off in this nice dry little cave. He traps us within by rolling that boulder as though it's weightless. What manner of undersea demon is he? Who's a demon, bub? I'm my dear old Aunt Petunia's little nephew, Benjamin. But Atuma still has more traps ready for all eventuality. Quick, ensnare the unsuspecting Submariner with a noose of unbreakable titanium wire. I'll fire as soon as Atuma breaks away, Commander. There, now is your chance. But what miracle is this? Some strange form has descended, catching the wire within its ever-changing shape. Why did Atuma never warn us that Namor had such fantastic allies? Now that I've saved the Sea Prince from this indestructible wire, I'll flip my body over, tangling Atuma's wet men with their own weapon. 
There is sinister magic at work here. Namor is in league with the shadowy ones. Despair not. Our fourth platoon is about to destroy all of Atlantis with a neutral nuclear dissolvo bomb. But before the fateful plunger can be depressed. Sorry, boys. It's all demolition work around here. I'll be handled by an expert from now on. Namely, the human torch. I don't know what the plunger would have done, but it doesn't matter now. I fried it to ashes. However, a split second later, the youthful torch is the first to become aware of a desperate dilemma. My flame is going, growing weaker. It, it's getting harder to breathe. Uh, Reed's oxo spray must be wearing off. If we don't get back to the surface fast, we'll all be kaput. But how can we desert Namor now? Meanwhile, being a few years older, the other three costume adventurers can fight or function a few minutes longer, and so, how magnificently Namor battles. He is like a gladiator of old, fearless, powerful, capable of anything. No one that lives long can long evade my mighty battle sword. Your words have a hollow ring, Atuma. Battles are won with deeds, not empty speeches. Wretched foe, all my legions will destroy you yet. If that be the will of Neptune, <laughs> I shall die a warrior, but never by the shattered blade of my cowardly Atuma. You call me cowardly because I use weapons against your naked strength, but call me what you will. Victory shall be mine, and it shall be now. So, that's why you wore those appendages. They concealed twin disintegrator rays. Only invisibility can save him now. I must not fail him. The born warrior, during the heat of battle, concentrates so intently on his foe that he is oblivious to all else. And so it is with Namor. Where are you? Where did you vanish to? As I had taken leave of his senses, he runs amok, like one gone mad. And, okay. So the sudden exertion has weakened the valiant invisible girl. And she is the next to feel the life-saving oxo spray wearing off. I, I can't seem to get enough air in my lungs. Everything is spinning before my eyes. Sue, hold on, gir girl, hold on. And then the reaction strikes the two strongest members of the FF, as Reed desperately realizes. Oxo spray only good for a few more seconds. No time to reach bathosphere. Desperate me measure needed. Ben, you and Johnny follow me. I'll help you to the surface. This is a heck of a time for follow the leader, Rubberhead. But I got nothing better to offer. We can do mo no more down here. I'll reach the surface. Luckily, there's a shallow area. If it were deeper, we'd be doomed. It don't look to me like we're headed for a ripe old age now, chum. We'll make it, Ben. We've got to. Just do as I say. Then as Ben anchors his reed's feet securely to the rocks below. Both of you. Hold on to me. Pull yourselves up slowly. We can't move too fast, or we'll get the bends. Well, don't just stand there, big buddy. Let's go. If that human rubber band snaps before he reaches the top, there'll be a hot time in Yancey Street tonight. Ben, do you do you think he'll make it? Sure, kid. You know what a tight wad he is. Our rental is paid up till next year, and he ain't about to waste any of it. Meanwhile... As the desperate Mr. Fantastic slowly reaches the surface, the battle raging below near its, nears its inve inevitable climax. There, without your disintegrators attached to your head covering, none, nothing can stop me from proving which of us is truly fit to rule Atlantis. I'm still your master. I'll destroy you with my bare hands. And so... As Sue's storm is slowly carried out of effective range, her invisibility power fan it fades from the still unaware Submariner. Fool! It is to Namor, the avenging son, you speak. Namor, Prince of Blood, Sovereign of the Seven Seas. To rule is my heritage. No barbarian shall wrest me from my crown and scepter. Enough! Spare me! The battle has ended. I can endure it no more. You are not fit to be king. A true sovereign prefers death to surrender. Carry this cringing coward below, beyond the proud gates of Atlantis. He and all who dare serve him 
are banished forever from the golden realm. Hail, mighty prince. Namor's ward is truly the law. A spoken law. Then when the carnage of battle has been cleared, I know how you betrayed me, Lady Dorma, but I forgive you, for I, above all others, am aware of the strange things one may do in the name of love. I must rest, for my limbs are weary and my spirits are weak. I pray no enemy such as Fantastic Four attacks us now, for surely they would prevail. My love is still unaware of how he has been helped, knowing his great pride, it is best he remains so. While many fathoms above, well, brush my teeth and call me pearly. We'll mate. We made it. We're in luck. There's one of Uncle Sammy's patrol boats. They'll see us. Use me as a raft till they reach us. Reed, my darling, y you never fail me. She she still calls me darling, even after seeing Namor again. Perhaps I'm the one she truly loves. Why is Namor so blind? When will he realize that Dorma was born to be his queen? Hey, Benji boy, think you could take Subby in a fair fight? You kidding, Junior? This one clobber and obey Sweetums, the first king of the whole shebang. And so a cloak of mystery and silence again enshrouds the undersea realm of the Prince Namor. But he is destined once again to battle our fabulous foursome, and when he does, every vivid thrill will be found here within the pages of the world's greatest comic magazine. And I think there's so there's a pinup of Namor. A Marvel Masterwork pinup. Prince Namor. Regal Namor I, Prince of Atlantis, Emperor of the Deep, Lord of the Seven Seas, and Supreme Commander of the Undersea Legions, the Submariner. And I think that's that's all. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, that would be appreciated. Um, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.